Well, I, I, was, I was preparing this for uh, this week, and usually on Mother's Day, um, I don't usually do a Mother's Day uh, message as such. We do some celebration, but I really felt to do that a little bit uh, today. And so this week as I was preparing, uh, I typed into the internet search bar, definition of a mother, definition of a mother. And I was really asking the question, a mother is what? A mother is what? Or what is a mother? And uh, I was looking for a core de- definition. How many know definitions are important in these, uh, this day and age? And uh, I know, and just, just to um, put a little, uh, uh, or, or say something before I preface the message, I realize that motherhood is more than all that I am going to talk about uh, today. So please understand uh, that. But I'm really focusing, uh, I guess, from, th- from this, what I read in those definitions as to expand out. That's what I'm sort of talking around uh, today. And so I do want you to understand, I, I understand it's far, far bigger and far, far more involved than uh, uh, that. But here's, when, when I put that in the search bar, here's what the Collins Dictionary definition said when I, uh, when I put in, what is a mother? So a mother, the Collins Dictionary says, a mother, a woman who has born a child. That's what the Collins Dictionary uh, has uh, says. Uh, yourdictionary.com says this, mother, a woman who gives birth or who has the responsibility of physical and emotional care for specific uh, children. And so that, that covers a whole sphere as well. But, but basically both of those definitions and pretty much all the other definitions began that way. A woman who gives, gives birth. And as I've said, I understand it's far, far more than that. But, I, but can I just say giving birth is a big deal. I, I mean, I, so I've heard. So, so, okay, but, but, but giving birth is a big deal. I was with my wife when she gave birth to all our three amazing children, and I do need to say that wasn't all at the same time. That was there, there was a, a year or two in between those, but I was there in that moment. All of our three children were born in beautiful India, as many of you will know, but I, I remember the day Gia. My daughter sitting next to me here arrived on the scene. And isn't it good that Grace is having... Do you know there's quite a few babies coming? <laughs> Slippers of 50 and I'll tell you. After the, so I know some stuff. I know some stuff. I want to I I tell you that red traffic light setting, it caused some problems. I'm just saying right, uh, right now, right now. But I, I, but, but I was there when, when, when Gia was born. I was in the... Uh, room, and um, I, I remember Anita, where she, we were in our apartment, she said, it was the morning, early morning, she's like, the baby's coming, baby's coming, the baby is coming, and so I'm, I'm like, okay, right, we, we didn't have a car, we were living in India, we were missionaries, we didn't have a car, all I had was a motorcycle, and so I had to get her uh, uh, to that hospital, and I didn't want, there was no way I was going to take her in a motorized auto rickshaw. No way. I was, no, no way I was going to take it with a, in a motorized auto rickshaw with a maniac driver. See, you've got to understand, I've crashed in those things. I've rolled them. I've seen, seen you know, so I was like, there's no way I'm putting, putting my wife and my new child in one of those auto rickshaws. So I said, honey, you're in labor. Get on the bike. Get on the motorcycle. Let's, uh, let's go. And so you've got to understand when she's riding the motorcycle, she, she didn't, you know, throw a leg over. She sat side saddle. On my 125 Suzuki, or Suzuki, as they say in India, she got on side saddle. In fact, that's how, when all our kids were born, that's how we used to go to church. You think it was tough to get to church today? I want to tell you. When we used to go to church on my motorbike, how did it work? I, ha- I would sit on it, then Gia would put Gia here, right here. She'd sit on the tank, and then Grace would sit right behind me, and then Anita would sit side saddle and put Reuben on her knees. That's how we did church every uh, safety first, people, safety, <laughs> safety first. But that's how we went. So I put Anita on the motorbike. We went off because you've got to understand that the, the traffic in India is insane. It's insane. And we're in a city of 9 million people. It was just crazy. But anyway, we got to uh, the hospital. Right? And, and by the time we got to the hospital in the birthing room, I've, I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. I, I kind of felt useless, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I held her hand. 
I held her hand and said, you'll be, you'll be okay. <laughs> she spoke rather harshly back, uh, <laughs> back to me, but, but, you know, which wasn't very helpful, quite frankly. <laughs> so it's debatable whether I was helpful or not, but, but that's how, how it was. And in and, and all seriousness, can I say this? Being there together in that place, seeing her give birth to our children, I have to say that I'm absolutely convinced that it was nothing less. What I witnessed, what she went through in that moment was nothing less than a divine miracle. Any parent in this room will know and understand that situation. Will know and understand that that miracle, that birthing, that which takes place. Uh, place there, is, there, there is nothing in the human experience, nothing, absolutely nothing in the human experience that even comes close to seeing your child be born. And in God's word, we we see such a beautiful picture of how the Creator, our Creator, our Creator God, partners. Partners within the womb of a woman. And we know it's metaphorical. We know it's poetic. We know we, under, we understand that. But, but the scriptures give us a beautiful picture of what takes place in what is called the secret place of a mother's, mother's womb. As our creator partners within the womb of a woman, the secret place to form and fashion every individual life. The psalmist writes in Psalm 139, many of you will know, probably some of you off by heart, for many this will be a favorite scripture, but it says this, for you created me. Here's the, here's the story, here's the God picture of the miracle that takes place inside the secret place of a mother's womb. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, the psalmist says, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. And I just want to say, mothers, this partnership with God, this this knitting Together, this fabricating of God, of bringing life and human life together in the secret place of a mother's womb is nothing less than a manifest miracle. And when you see life coming coming forth, when you see the life that is that is produced, a, a human life so carefully crafted in every minute detail, all, all, all I could say, and I've been around I've seen our grandkids born and I've seen Jeremy crying like a baby <laughs> because there is nothing quite like, and I've got to admit I cried like a baby yeah I did Isaac <laughs> but it, it was just it, it, it's just an amazing amazing miracle and that moment when your when your gaze fixes upon your Your child with fingerprints and DNA so completely unique. Never before and never again will will there be anyone else like you, my child, on earth ever. So unique. From Eve, who is the mother of all Living, it says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, until now this, this feat, this miracle, this miracle of bearing and bringing forth life is uniquely and exclusively something only a mother can lay claim to have done. See, men can't do that. Or let me say it again, men can't do that. 
I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to be controversial. In fact, that shouldn't even be controversial. But men can't get pregnant. <laughs> Thank you for that one. Mm. <laughs> men can't get pregnant. You know, Grace said in her poem, wasn't that good? Well done, you guys. That was fantastic. <laughs> did you think when Candace was getting up, did you go, oh, oh awkward, uh, awkward? Well done, Candace. But Grace said in her poem, shout out to all the mums raising the next generation. Candace said, we literally wouldn't be here without you. And Grace was like, that doesn't need any explanation. But today it does. And today's society that we live in, of course it requires an exp, uh, exp uh, what is that? Ex <laughs> explana uh, explanation. Too much coffee this morning. In the age we live, it definitely requires an explanation. Men can't give birth. And I, I have to say that because even when I was preparing that and I typed in birth, men can't give birth, up pops emojis of pregnant men. And I, I'm like, this is the world that we are uh, 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 living, uh, living in. And friends, I'm going to tell you, that's ideology, not biology. Men, men, and some of the men are going, thank you, Jesus. But men can't give birth, and they're saying, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's ideology, not biology. Men can't have babies. I want to just say this should not be controversial. I don't hate anyone. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. It's just biology. And, and can I just say to, to, to the mothers here among us, Again, when I see all this and the, all the stuff going on, I, I, I just want, I'm just saying, mothers, I don't want... Uh, mother, let no one steal your thunder. Come on. Let no one steal your thunder. I, I want to celebrate motherhood today and all that that means. Mothers, no one should be stealing your thunder. Someone said motherhood ain't easy. If it were, fathers would do it. Every dad here, every dad here knows the three words that solve every problem. Ask your mother. One little girl did just that. She a little girl went to her mum and said, how did, we, how did we get here? Mum answered, God made Adam and Eve and they had children and so all mankind was made. Two days later, she went and asked her father the same question. Dad answered many years ago, there were monkeys from which we evolved. The confused girl returned to her mum and said, Mum, how is it possible you told me that the human race was created by God? And Dad said, we came from monkeys. Oh, she's like, it's so simple, my darling. She said, when I was telling you about God and creating and all that, I was talking about my side of the family. When I was talking about, <laughs> when her father was talking, he was talking about, hey, come on. He was talking about his side of the family. <laughs> I just want to say today and make sure you know, mums, that you're awesome, that you're special, that you're unique, that no one should steal your thunder for that which you have walked through. There is nothing like a mother. You are unique, amazing, and we want to honor you today. In fact, the scriptures teach us that mothers and motherhood is to be honored and to be held in high Regard, God gave 10 commandments. He gave 10 commandments to, to uh, these are like 10 things that are important about life. 10, 10 things, 10, 10 commandments. And right there in the middle of those, commandment number five is this, honor your father and mother. Smack dab in the middle. Honor your father and mother. Doesn't mean they got everything right. Doesn't mean they had it all together. To honor means to give weight, to add weight to something. It's not looking at what's wrong, and I'm sure there's all stuff that we could have done better or should have done better or whatever, but to add weight is to, to add weight to the good, to add weight to the good. Honor your father and your mother that your days, listen, here's what it says, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you, that you may live a long, long life. As I thought about that very deeply, I thought, because you're going to, if you're naughty, you're going to live a short life when your mother picks you up by your, uh, <laughs> your life could be very short if you're being a naughty, naughty person. And see, I want to say today, our society seeks to belittle mother, uh, motherhood, to devalue it, to make it 
as if uh, having a career is way more important. I, and, and don't get me wrong, don't write me a letter. Don't write, please, please. I understand. I have no problem with anyone having a career. But at the same time, I want to just say to all the mothers, it is a glorious job that you are doing. It is a fantastic <laughs> job that you are doing. And it needs to be, it needs to be honored and, 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 and talked about and expressed. See, the scriptures are clear that moms are to be honored, to be held in high regard. Proverbs 31 verse 28 says, Her children arise and call her blessed. And this is a day where we as, we as children, as all of us are children of somebody, can rise and say blessed. Blessed. And maybe your mom's not here, maybe she's passed away or whatever but we can we can stand today and say blessed her children arise and call her blessed honor her for all that her hands have done and so that's what we're doing here today mums we thank you for all the mahi you have put in of course as i've said there is so much more to being a mum than giving birth and judges chapter 5 of the old testament it speaks of deborah who was a prophetess, she was a warrior, she was a, she was a judge. And in Judges 5 verse 7, it tells us, there's what's called the Song of Deborah, and it tells us that in the villages of Israel and in the villages and the, the towns that people were basically sad and, 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 and depressed and oppressed and stressed out. There was no life in those villages. It says, until, until. Deborah arose as the mother of Israel. So I understand that motherhood is far more than just giving birth. I understand that to, to Deborah was a mother to a nation. And like I've said, there is so much more to being a mom than just giving birth. Mom's love, mom's nurture, mom's protect. Humorist Emma Bombeck said this when I think about mom's protect. They said, when your mother asks, do you want a piece of advice? It is a mere formality. It doesn't matter if you answer yes or no, you're going to get it anyway. And all the mums said, amen. amen. Mums know stuff. Mums know stuff. Like, 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 like mums know, silence is golden, except if you have kids, silence is then just suspicious. Yep, that's just... That's, that's, how it is. They, 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 they know that. And, 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 and here's the thing. With, with mums, you just don't mess with mums. You don't mess with mum. A, a police recruit was doing his final, final exam, and he was asked the question, what would you do if you had to arrest your mother? And he said, call for backup. <laughs> okay. Nobody messes with mum. And the truth is, mums, you are like the glue, often unseen, but holding the family together. Mum's love, mum's comfort. In fact, God... God's word says in the book of the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 66 verse 13, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. I like this, that God is comparing the comfort that he gives to that of a mother. That's the picture God gives. That's how special that kind of love is. And so mothers today, we're just saying mothers matter. Mothers matter. Turn to a mother near you and say, you matter. Oh, come on, say it like you believe it now. Come on, just tell you, you matter. You matter. <laughs> Truth is today, mothers matter. And today, today is just a day where we, where we pause as a nation to make sure every mum knows that. And so to all the mums here, today. Happy Mother's Day. And literally, as has already been said, we just wouldn't, actually, we just couldn't be here without you. Could the keyboards come? Actually, the keyboards can't. Could the player come? The keyboard, can't. The keyboard just stays there exactly where, where it is. It can't move. It actually can't move unless we put wheels on it which it hasn't got. 
Thank you, AJ. Would the keyboard player come? Can we just honour one more time all the mums in the house? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To all the visiting mums too, hey, you're welcome to come. You don't have to come once a year too. You can come every Sunday <laughs> if you want to. Every day's Mother's Day here on Sunday. I want to tell you, we want to bless you. Friend, we do church every week. Why? To bring glory and honor to Him. And so as we honor moms today, we also want to, I want you to know as a pastor, the primary reason we're here is to honor Christ and to honor King Jesus. He is worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Family is such an important thing, instituted by God for the betterment of mankind. Our world is in such a mess in so many areas. I don't know what your life is like today. If you Maybe you're here for the first time, you've never come. I, I, I don't know, and you've tried to do life in your own strength. I, I just want to, before I close, give you an opportunity to tell you that Christ changed my life many years ago. I was a drug addict. I was lost. But I had an encounter with God in a place like this, and it turned my life around. You might be here going, well, God could never love a person like me, Pastor. You don't know what I've done, friend. The gospel is not about what you have done. It's about what God has done. It's not about how bad you are. It's about how good He is. See, the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus. We can never earn it. We can never buy it. God gives it. We don't deserve it. He gives it. It's a free gift, the Bible says. And again, you might be here and you go, man, I've tried to do my, my life my way. And, and, and yeah, me too. But I've found now for many, many years that when I invited Christ into my life, when I made Him King, when I made Him Lord, my life changed instantly. Some of you who were here last week heard Joe's uh, uh, testimony. 22 years on meth. And God turned his life around. He's a walking miracle. In fact, there are many walking miracles in here. I want to encourage you if you're here today and you're going, wow, Pada. I just know that, that, that I need God in my life. How, 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 can I, how can I get God in my life? Can I just say it's, it's as simple as a prayer? Saying, Lord, would you come into my life? It's not something to be done lightly. But saying, God, would you cleanse me and wash me of my sin and be the king of my life? Help me from this day forth to walk with you. doesn't mean you get everything right. Who does? but it's living out of His grace given for us. Oh, I'd encourage you to do that. I'd encourage you to give your life to Him, to turn towards Him, to forsake sin. Don't try it in your own strength. Allow God to live in you and give you the power to overcome by His Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. Let Christ change you and turn your life around. Let's bow our heads. I'm going to say a prayer, and if that means something to you, even if you're watching online, and you're saying, man, I, th that's me, Pastor. I need to, to say this. Jo join with me in this prayer. We're all going to say it together. Lord Jesus, today I come to you, a sinner in need of a Savior. Today I ask you to be the king of my life. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me as white as snow. Today, I give my life to you afresh. Be my King and my Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you stand? If there's a mother near you, turn to him and say, you look amazing today.
And remember, your plants are out there, made with love. But as we close, let me pronounce this blessing over you. If you're comfortable, just put your hands out like this to receive that which God wants to do. If you need prayer for anything after the service, there will be a prayer station over there and they will pray for you for any need at all. You don't have to be a part of the church to go to the prayer, prayer station. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you, especially mothers today, and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.